this video we're going to look a little bit more at limits of linear functions. So in the previous examples you may have already noticed the relationship between epsilon and the corresponding delta for linear functions. So let's let f be a linear function. We know from our algebra classes that f equals f of x equals mx plus b where m is a real number constant called the slope of the function and b is a real number constant so that 0 b is the coordinate for the uh, point which is the y-intercept of the graph of the function. And of course the graph is a non-vertical straight line. Furthermore, recall the most important characteristics of linear function is that they are functions with a constant rate of change. That is, the slope between any two points of the function is, a, is constant. So constant rate of change, slope is constant. Okay. Now, in general, remember that the slope for any two points, which are part of the function, is delta y over delta x, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's going to equal that m, which is a constant. Okay, so now let's look at the uh, little box that we were looking at. So here we have our linear function here, and we're interested in a limit here, which is going to be actually a point on the graph for a, 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 a linear function, so that this is a continuous function here. So this is actually the point C, F of C, or C comma L. L is F of C. And so we have our line right here. And we draw our little critical box. And our box goes from L minus epsilon on the bottom to L plus epsilon on the top. On the left, it goes from um, delta, a C minus delta on the right left to C plus delta on the right. And of course, you have C right here in the middle. So what are these points? Well, since this is an increasing function, it's going to go from corner to corner on our box if we have our delta set at exactly the right spot so that all of the Y values uh, are between L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon for all the X values between X minus or C minus delta and C plus delta. And we want the largest such, such uh, delta for that particular epsilon and that'll make it go out the corners. If it's an increasing it'll go out function it'll go out the lower left and upper right. Whereas a decreasing function is going to go out the upper left and the lower right. But let's just take this example here uh, the, the other one works very similarly. As we start here at this point, this is the point, um, what is it? C minus delta comma L minus epsilon. And this is the point C comma L. And this point up here in the upper right corner is the point C plus delta comma L plus epsilon. So we have these four points, this of these three points. Now if we take the first two and do the slope, what we're doing is we're taking delta x is, is this distance here, dividing it into delta y here. So you take delta y, which is going to be what? Well, that distance is epsilon. And this is delta x, which is delta, lowercase delta. So the slope then is epsilon over delta. And the same thing's true here. As you go from here to here, once again, because it has a constant slope, this is still delta and this is still epsilon. So on a linear function, it's going to go out both corners because the slope is constant here. We know the vertical change is epsilon in both cases. One of these, if it goes to the corner, will be delta. And, and since they both go to the corner, it will both be the same delta. And so we see that uh, the slope is epsilon over delta. So multiply both sides by delta and divide both sides by m, we get delta is epsilon divided by m. And so that formula is the formula you may have come up with already by noticing that that's, that's what we came up with every time to find delta for a specific epsilon or for general epsilon for that matter. We just took the epsilon divided by the slope. That gave us delta. 
and that's going to work for any linear function. In fact, this really kind of works for every function in a way because going to the corner to corner is the slope between that limit point, provided it exists, and that corner up there where you go across delta and up epsilon. The problem is, is the m is not necessarily constant. You pick, and normally in a function, if you pick a different value for, um, uh, if you go left or right, so, so going to the right will get you to a corner, but going to the left might put it up here higher, for example, if the function was maybe, maybe say, wasn't, wasn't uh, straight here. Okay, or what if we have uh, different values of C? We might have different values for that slope. So the slope is not constant in general for most functions. But if it's a linear function, the slope is constant. And of course, that m is just that coefficient of the x right there in our y equals mx plus b kind of formula. And so we can see that we always get that same, same nice little formula. Okay, and notice that this is actually independent of whatever we choose for C, but of course it does depend on what we choose for epsilon, and of course the smaller we make epsilon, the smaller we make delta, which is always the case.